marriage transactions are payments or transfer of property that occur between families of the bride and groom during the time of a marriage the form direction and scale of payments vary widely in some settings such as in hindu or sikh communities in nepal or north india negotiations about such payments are accepted practice among muslims in south asia on the other hand the emergence of dowry demands has raised an alarm the anthropological classic bride wealth and dowry provides simple but authoritative definitions of these transactions as follows dowry transfers that follow from the bride's family to the groom's family bride wealth or bride price transfers that follow from the groom's family to the bride's family beyond these are a host of other exchanges that take place during marriages these may include the provision of services and the exchange of gifts or of sisters daughters between families while economic transactions these exchanges often have an underlying economics exchange function social scientist who study marriage exchange typically focus on trying to understand why transactions exist however the full range of consequences of marriage transactions is not well understood population council work with adolescent girls suggests that along with the timing of marriage or practices such as child marriage cause of marriage may have important implications for post marital well being and intimate partner violence in particular the evolution of women's and men's worth in the marriage market in terms of dowry or bride price may have important consequences for their self esteem and sense of self worth with significant implications for their well being as adults and for gender equity at the evidence base on the consequences of the economic cause of marriage remains extremely weak the deeply embedded dowry marriage may seem like a personal affair however many do not realize that one's choice of a potential spouse is as much as a social affair even in highly individualistic societies in which marriage appears to be an individual's choice we may not be conscious of conforming to societal expectations that propel us to marry within our social group some cultures contain more explicit societal expectations as can be seen in the institution of dowry in india the 13th or 14th century saw an introduction of the hindu law of the mitakshara system under this law a female was not entitled a share of parental wealth unlike a male who was entitled a share at birth the bride price was meant to act as a compensation to females with regards to the law that governed the society idealistically the combination of the hindu law and the practice of bride price allowed the family wealth to be maintained in the family and at the same time ensure that females upon marriage are economically secured the practice of presenting bride price to the wife's family was not however strictly adhered to up to today the trend that governed marriage transactions is that from the bride and her family to the groom and his family the practice of dowry the typical situation of a marriage practice is as dalmia and lawrence put it marriages in india are largely an alliance between two families as a result it is the household of each potential spouse 
that makes the marital decisions. The household of a bride typically initiates a search for a groom for their daughter and gives consideration to both individual traits and family background of the groom. In the large majority of marriages, the bride's household pays a dowry to the groom's household, the value of which depends upon the traits of the bride, the groom and their respective households. The dowry institution strikes marriage as an exchange system in which parents have to pay the price to have their daughter marry off. There is more, however, to the dowry institution than a one-off wealth transfer. Dowry is often asked for even after marriage which essentially places a huge burden on the bride's family. The deeply embedded dowry has led to many social problems. As parents are well aware of the disadvantage and even danger that cannot be avoided females in the society, infanticide is more common in the society than in other more egalitarian societies. Parents who are not successful in getting an illegal abortion resort to extreme attempts to lose the baby resulting in babies born with disabilities. Incidents whereby the bride's parents are not able to afford subsequent dowries can expect to receive news of their daughter's death. The groom's family usually get away with it and merely await dowry from the new bride. The immense suffering imposed on females and their family points to a society that essentializes gender inequality. Men's subjugation of women is seen as natural how things are in their culture. Static traditions versus changing practices. There is good reason to believe that it is discontinuities in practices and changes in expectations that are at issue rather than established and long-standing traditions. It is now well established that the cost of marriage have escalated in a wide range of settings. In a series of rigorous data assessments, the advent of dowry or its escalation over the past several decades has been linked to marriage squeeze. This is particularly well documented in South Asia. In Bangladesh and India, the timing of rising dowry demands coincides with high rates of population growth, which combined with cultural preference for large age differences in marriage favoring grooms creates an imbalance in the marriage market. In many settings, costs of weddings have grown prohibitively expensive with expenses totaling several times at the total annual household income. This cost escalation may be attributed to raising aspirations and raising standards of living. When such expectations are not met, these practices have been linked to various negative influences on women's postmarital well-being, most frequently to the perpetration of severe forms of domestic violence. Marriage transactions are often not completely rigid but malleable and related to other desired marriage market attributes. Where the young age of a bride is desirable attribute, poor families may choose to marry their daughters early to save on marriage costs. Similarly, unaffordable bride price expectations may encourage young people to pursue relationships and childbearing outside marriage. Marriage-based transactions, whether in the form of dowry or bride price, exaggerate the marginalization and exploitation of girls since both practices commoditize or monetize the value of girls. 
while bright price appears to resemble more directly a transaction of purchasing a girl's reproductive and productive rights dowry perpetuates the cycle of exploitation as well factors that determine bright price characteristics of bride and groom the only individual characteristic that has any significant effect on the amount paid as bride price is bride's age at marriage bride price is positively associated with bride's age at marriage meaning groom's family pays a higher bride price if the bride is older in the sample of rural indian marriage unions the mean age at marriage for women is 18 years by age 32 99% of all women get married there is no significant effect on either bride's education or parental land holding or even groom's education on bride price groom's parental land holding has negative effect suggesting grooms with more parental land holding pay less bride price but this effect is marginally significant and the magnitude is very small householding and matching characteristics the number of sisters that the groom has has highly significant positive effect on bride price it is difficult to explain this relation even though the relation is persistent distance of marriage migration is not a significant variable that affects bride price though caste is not significant either interestingly it shows a negative relation high caste groom pays less bride price may be because they enjoy higher bargaining power obtained from their caste affiliation like groom price the real value of bride price is also declining over time and the relation is statistically significant community level effect according to the marriage squeeze hypothesis with high sex ratio of marriageable women and men it is the groom price or dowry that is expected to be affected positively not bride price and as expected the result does not display any significant effect of sex ratio on the amount paid as bride price but like groom price we see significant regional variation in case of bride price too a table can represent the mean and median value of bride price for four different categories population council's work on marriage transactions population council programs to prevent child marriage usually incorporate asset building strategies for young women through education and livelihoods opportunities for girls research on the economic dimensions of marriage has informed these programming approaches for the well-being of girls council work on child marriage has evolved to incorporate multi-sectoral approaches that address the economic considerations of marriage given that marriage traditions and cultures including the characteristics of marriage transactions vary even within country context programmatic approaches strive to be tailored to specific context data on marriage transactions from survey research not withstanding these studies our efforts at understanding marriage transactions and the consequences for the well-being of girls and women have been limited by a lack of data national representative household surveys such as the living standards measurement surveys of the world bank lsms or the demographic and health surveys dhs often collect data only on age at marriage and spousal characteristics among surveys that address marriage and family formation more specifically a few surveys collect data on a wider variety of marriage related variables 
the 2006 world bank gender norm survey is exemplary in its detailed collection of data on marriage characteristics and on marriage transactions this data set collects information on several marriage themes that researchers agree are instrumental in conducting rigorous empirical research on transactions and marriage dynamics these themes are as follows arrangement of marriage spousal choice asset and differentials between families presence of village endogamy patterns in post marital residents the world bank survey is also particularly detailed in its questions on marriage transactions in bangladesh themes listed below on marriage transactions are likely to be instrumental in enhancing the understanding of the role marriage transactions play in marriage timing and of a host of post marital well being outcomes and status indicators whether money and materials were transferred the amount of exchange monetary or otherwise whether the transfers were voluntary or demanded by one family from another how families meet demands and whether demands exceed what a typical family can pay whether negotiations about what and how much is to be exchanged occurred and whether a paid middleman was involved how families acquire financial resources to pay for a dowry or bride price researchers at the population council have begun taking stock of the kinds of quantitative survey data that are available on marriage transactions recent reviews suggest that large scale data that address these themes and questions do not exist at a national level much of the research conducted on this topic thus invariably comes from small localized and unrepresentative samples severely reducing the generalizability of the findings initiatives that drive the collection of such data would positively affect studies on marriage transaction at the national level with significant potential for delivering policy relevant research or marriage is becoming a financial transaction these days answer to this particular question is of course a big s yes. but as every coin has two different sides this question are to be precise answer has two different aspects attached to it the first one being the most popular one dowry guys this term or this phenomena is still prevailing in the indian culture any ngo or other institutes in favor of eradicating dowry would give you many details about the ratio of dowry cases present in india this justifies half of the answer saying s yes, marriages are becoming a financial transaction the other side of the question which is not much into media or not taken care by any ngos is a financial transaction done for breaking marriages yes students we are talking about the divorce maintenances or the alimonies which parents of the bride are happily looting from the groom of his family research has shown in many parts of the, an online survey on changing trends in marriages which was conducted recently in india the survey reflects the perception of the people and their changing outlook towards marriages more than 55% of the nearly 5200 people who took part in the survey voted companionship as the most important ingredient for a successful marriage only 19% believed that economic stability was more important for a successful marriage physical intimacy came third with 10.3% interestingly only 5% felt that it was necessary to have children for a marriage to be successful about 10% said that 
sharing the same religious beliefs were essential for marital success. About 72% of the respondents felt that companionship was more important than personal freedom. Companionship emerged as a most crucial element for success in a marriage in the survey. The majority of the people who took part in our survey believed that marriage was a divine union that should not be broken. The survey indicates that Indians attach a lot of sacredness to their marriages while not being averse to the shedding views that they consider outdated. The survey has captured the shifts in thinking and trends with respect to matrimony on a large scale. A hopping of 64% felt that marriage was a divine union that cannot be broken. About 24% did not think so. 12% were not so sure. Over 65% felt that meaning of marriage has changed over the years. 24% did not agree. Nearly 38% of the respondents said that they would sacrifice their freedom for the sake of their marriage. But 28% were not so sure. The remaining was clear that they would not give up their freedom to save their marriage. Reflecting a change in outlook, 34.5% said that premarital sex was no longer a moral crime though 41.4% still frowned on it, while 24% did not commit to any views here. 34.5% did not consider live-in relationships taboo, only 27% disagreed, 38% did not say yes or no. Another surprising response was on prenuptial agreements. 48% felt that it was necessary to safeguard individual freedom, while 27.6% disagreed. Are married people happier than unmarried people? 41.4% said yes, while 34.5% replied in the negative. 24% were not sure. In fact, an impressive 65.5% voted for companionship as the number one reason for them to get into marriage. Other reasons like children, security, societal pressure and religious beliefs scored fairly low. Although the lack of an appropriate evidence base is clearly a hindrance to exploring marriage costs fully, this review highlights several important aspects of marriage transactions. Research has shown in many parts of the world, the cause of marriage are drivers of social change. Even while practices are widely varied, the consequences for women are overwhelmingly negative. As programs to promote healthy transitions to adulthood take root and proliferate in different contexts, particular manifestations of marriage cause and their correlates need to be taken into account both in terms of understanding change that is already underway and for designing programs to bring about change. A nuanced understanding may avoid unintended consequences of programs that target a specific practice such as a child marriage. The case of Nepal emphasizes the importance of targeting the poor who may be more adversely affected by these practices. On the other hand, the specific norms of exchange in Egypt and Pakistan may have helped to prop up traditions of late marriage for women. Processes of development and modernization such as urbanization and migration may well erode the basis of these norms, leading to a downward pressure at the age of marriage. Recent efforts such as the social norms approach to programming promoted by UNICEF suggesting a starting point. Indeed, an important contribution is in the naming of the approach and its insistence that norms exist 
and need to be addressed without appropriate evidence and what the norms are, how they function and with what consequences. However, it is difficult to see how the approach itself would proceed.